So welcome back uh, for this uh, try and fly of the Aerosoft Airbus A330-300. Now, um, we're actually flying this time and it did work this time. And when I did the video, I had no idea why is it working now. As it turned out, it seems that SimStarter NG, which I'm using to set up all the scenarios, the sceneries and so on, the settings for try and fly, for example, or other types of scenarios that I have, apparently SimStarter does something that breaks the Airbus. Now, don't ask me what that could be, because it's the only aircraft that shows such problems with SimStarter. But it is a complex beast, so, yep, possible, could be. Um, what I actually realized after I found this, this reference to SimStarter NG is, yep, the two flights that were successful were repeated uh, starts of the simulator but differently to the first one round uh, I didn't use SimStarter I just started the simulator without SimStarter because the scenario was set all the settings were written so I could start the simulator without having to go through SimStarter again to change the configuration and then it worked and it's actually true the two flights that did work for me were started without SimStarter whereas the other three ones that failed for me were actually started via SimStarter. <laughs> so I think we have a fix and uh, yeah, watch now the, the flight, the actual flight going on <laughs> and uh, yeah, something learned again. Um, weird things and, uh, and it shows you that uh, although Aerosoft probably has partly caused this as well because I mean there must be something in the way they set up the systems or programmed everything that has a problem with this combination um, but then again SimStarter may also do something which is not let's say standard I don't know I can't tell you I just hope that between the two of them they're going to fix this I mean, but at least I know now what to do in order to properly use the aircraft. And that also explains why this doesn't happen that often with people. Why I'm one of the chosen few, sort of, because not everybody has SimStarter. It's probably the, the smaller percentage of flight simmers use SimStarter. Um, and therefore, it worked. This particular thing worked for the majority of people. Um, yeah, it must have been something weird and wonderful. Now we know. Okay, so have fun with the flight. So, hello, welcome back. Um, <laughs> something that I do very, very rarely and that is uh, cutting and actually making a video out of two different takes. Um, but depending on where I have cut the first part of the video, um, I was not able to get the engines to work. Of four flights that I attempted, three failed with exactly that same issue. And uh, interestingly now, after I've restarted everything, um, <laughs> yeah, it worked again. Don't ask me what is wrong and what I'm doing different. That's just the way it seems to be. It is a real pain in the in the backside. <laughs> um, yeah, what can I say? Um, so prepared is is working fine. I put the priority up so that we don't get uh, problems. And I actually switched into dark, which is really my normal try and fly scenario really so yeah um, let's see is the weather radar on let's turn that weather radar on and um, yeah I'm going to turn on the uh, these things as well because I tend to forget if I don't and then I'm turning off the lights 
and we're going to turn on the taxi light and now check out this we are in the dark and we have below 20 we have below 20 as a frame rate um, that is because I switched back to 2 SSAA SSAA is actually apparently too demanding so I'm going on to MSAA and at least while well, we stay yeah Tenden from a tendency in the dark performance is worse because the HDR lighting and so on on this airport uh, will bring this really towards the limit unfortunately okay so I hope nothing has changed. I'm going to release the parking brake now. And as you can see, I can finally taxi and uh, engines spool up. I had to set up everything again, obviously. I'm a bit pissed off about that, but uh, what can you do? And we are <laughs> below 20. Uh, this will get better once we are away from this airport and into the sky, but um, yeah, it's not perfect. Um, and some other buses pulling to the left. probably still need to fine-tune my tiller axis so just checking hundred uh, above I don't know why it's doing that um, actually the I'm, I'm using the left brake in order to get around here I may, I may have been a bit fast, yes, I actually was a bit fast, it shouldn't really be above 12. Um, the steering is very slow though, um, it really takes a long time before that tiller axis input that I give on the z-axis of my joystick really comes into play. Not sure why that is. And today it's doing something that it didn't do the other times, and that is pulling to the left. So I'm not sure why that is. Anyway, yeah, maybe because the right engine is. Does it have. Maybe. No, no, it's the same. Yeah, performance has. Um, degraded drastically since I've moved into the dark but you can see the hard air Hundred above. oh I'm not sure why it's doing that it's not supposed to do that oh uh, yeah well anyway um, take off config and uh, so let's go to the before Take off checklist. Flight controls are checked, flight instruments checked, briefing is confirmed, flap settings, config one. Uh, the V speeds, yeah, set ATC, set ECAM memo, take off no blue, cabin crew is advised, engine start selector is normal, and the packs are on. So let's try and get, get off here. You can see this new HDR lighting and PBR effects, so um, the light from outside actually brightens up the cockpit because we seem to be under a, a lamp. Well, at least the engines are running now, but you know, it is 
is uh, yeah and there are people that have similar issues I one of the th suspicions I had was that it may have been GSX possibly maybe GSX actually doing this um, but then again I now did a pushback with with GSX again and I was able to start above. the engine. Why are you doing this every time I brake? Hundred above. All right then. Um, landing lights on, strobes on, and off we go. Manual Flex 54 as I as runway. Yeah, and it's pulling, it's pulling. I probably have a maybe a miscalibrated joystick, I don't know. We want to rotate. It's not announcing one and the rotation okay good to know the great gear up Top. thrust setting climb to follow with the side stick and perhaps up and autopilot on so I think the desktop audio might be a little bit on the loud side. I'm going to reduce it a bit. Uh, transition altitude. Yeah, so we are below 20. That's not good. It will get better now. Uh, and this is really, really bright. Um, yeah, I wish I wish you could turn it off because it it, it is yeah not ideal. <laughs> Okay, so it actually switched to 250 because I uh, did change the speeds, if you remember. So we go to the performance. I actually pre-selected 250, also for the cruise phase and also for the descent phase. So that apparently seems to work, although it uh, it switches into open mode here Uh, the cabin yeah and you can see that the low um, anti-aliasing settings are not really great for 
visuals, so I see a lot of blinking and uh, flimmering lines, stuff like that. Yeah, well, that's what I do. it is a borderline PC. Uh, by the way, this is uh, this is the printout of the uh, load sheet. I got that when I set up stuff again at the load and fuel, and I used the instant load. And because this time we didn't have GSX, so I have still I have a suspicion that GSX may be involved in, in that problem because I was running through the whole um, GSX cycle uh, the other times. The one flight that worked, I was actually on the runway and I didn't use GSX. So yeah, I used GSX for pushing though. But I had everything set up before, so I don't. I don't know. I mean, may maybe, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I can't tell you. So we've reached flight level 200 pretty quickly, apparently. And you can see that we reached the uh, cruising altitude because uh, the trays come out and uh, the, the footrests come down. So, that seems to work fine. Yeah, it was climbing pretty heftily. Yeah, we are empty. So, it's, it is a light aircraft. Yeah, I'm not sure I like this effect. Okay. Let's turn that off again. Okay. The lights are, by the way, here. There's this con the CTL light, and there's also ah. There is also a dome light. Uh, no, I think that was the wrong one. That's the storm. Oh yeah, so that's dim. So now we've got dim dome light. So that's better. We're now following our route 250 as set up in the FNC. <laughs> We have Akini behind us and Ostis uh, now as our next waypoint. So estimated fuel on board in Munich when we arrive will be 6.2 tons. I was reading on the Aerosoft forums that this fuel consumption is probably too high. So that could be a bit of a problem when we have a longer route ahead of us so this is the progress ah so it does actually progress reports um, which is good because that's what we need with an A330 we want to go transatlantic and the likes so overhead Akini UTC 1920 something 
Lytle 100 to Ostas uh, UT, uh, to 1932 Zulu. Okay, next Bamta uh, at 1933 Zulu. Yeah, flight level 200. And the speed, the speed, the speed is actually not here. Yeah, okay, but we can read the speed. So that's nice, we have a progress report. It is a pity uh, because I now have the problem that I can't rely on, on that thing to work. Now let's see what it does on this sharp corner, my problem corner, which is part of my try and fly. I can't explain to you why we could not use the engines in the first round. I can't explain it to you. I have no explanation so far and it is a real pain in the back side because you never know and you'll find out when you're actually ready to taxi you find out that things don't work because you, you wouldn't know before that and I have no idea what I'm doing wrong and, and restarting everything yeah great but why didn't it work the first time around you know so I don't know so we're now turning this looks actually relatively okay. Yep. Now, as far as I know, this aircraft does not have uh, this kind of automatic vertical navigation thingy that we know from Boeing's. So, you will have to manage that yourself. So, which means that as soon as we have hopefully successfully negotiated the rose up corner, I'm going to use a managed descent to flight level 150. Yeah, performance is back at my limited 30, around-ish, you know, with lots of fluctuations. It's not perfect, but, uh, well, it's okay. Yeah. I think that looked pretty well. Trust idle. Yep, very good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the sound uh, during flight is good. I don't hear any artifacts in the sound, which is good. There are some sounds in some situations where you do hear artifacts but um, yeah this this is quite okay 
I hate all the crookedy lines and the flicker that I have here. That's uh, I don't know if you can see this on the video. Maybe you can't, but uh, I can't see it and I don't like it. But that's the only way to, on this marginal PC that I have here, um, that's the only way to let it run above 20 frames per second. I mean, when we're in the air, what I could do is actually uh, switch back to I can go now and switch back to two times SSAA, which is a bit better, but I can't do it higher than that. Yeah, there's less flickering. You can still see crooked lines, but it's less flickery. Um, so out here, it's actually no problem. I could even run probably with four times SSAA, which makes this reasonably okay but I'm pretty sure when we get back to Munich I uh, will probably have to tone this down again so that worked really well um, what did it do So I'm putting in the 5000 and I, I let it kind of manage the altitude itself. So we're Landu. Tusto was the, uh, the constraint. And we need to be at 5,000 latest with Magat. That didn't work out the last time, so hopefully we'll be down in time this time around. Yeah, I probably have cut away quite a bit of the first part uh, because I've, I I got slightly irritated at the end because <laughs> I was really fed up with having that again. Um, yeah, I don't think I'm going to use the Airbus uh, very much in the next weeks until a hotfix is out and hopefully these kind of issues have been resolved. Yeah, it's it's a real pain. Hmm. I mean, with with experience like this, I might as well go to explain and start the jar design again. There's actually a new version out. <laughs> it isn't much. It's actually more reliable than than what I had here. Yeah. Now there's no doubt Aerosoft will get this right. It just takes time and obviously they didn't have enough time, although it took a long time to develop. But that's what it is, you know, it's software. So depending on how complex the system is, and this is a complex beast, there's a lot of things that can go wrong. They tried a lot of innovative or different things they try to make use of prepared as a platform and obviously if you do things that are new kind of and that are that haven't really been done or haven't really been foreseen for example by Lockheed Martin um, yeah there can be issues so the developer in me understands this the customer in me is a bit pissed off So, we're not really descending a lot, but that is probably because it calculates a vertical path. You see this little, uh, see that little green dot? It is basically our vertical path. It just would not go automatic into this kind of VNAV mode. 
We should not forget to then switch into managed mode with the speed when we get uh, closer to our arrival. Because they need to go into approach mode and for that we need to make sure that we are on managed speed. Yeah, because you cannot uh, pull out the navigation display, this is rather small. So it's hard to read from afar. It's not perfect. You have to always go very close to the displays, which is, um, yeah, is less than ideal. Outer tank transferred, okay. That's the automatic uh, fuel management uh, in the Airbus. So we are below 10,000, landing lights on. Ten miles to Mike and my Q. Uh, we're definitely going to be at 5,000 this time around. So hopefully the ILS will be intercepted correctly. That did not work. On the only flight that was able to do, because for some reasons the engines did work, uh, I got a botch job on the ILS. <laughs> but we were slightly too high and then I tried to kind of uh, do it manual and that was a bit of a it was that didn't work too well either <laughs> but that's because I'm not used to the aircraft yet the flyby wire So I'm hoping it'll be better this time around. So we're approaching Mike, five miles. And it's uh, decided to go on a very shallow descent because we should be above 5,000. So it calculates something that would probably bring us down somewhere here. So that is quite okay and also the way it took my sharp bend was also pretty good better than many aircraft especially in x-plane things go reasonably wrong <laughs> on that corner in prepared it's not that bad but i also have aircraft that cannot properly make it there so that is actually quite good i also see don't seem to have a problem with following my flight plan I'm not sure why that doesn't work for other people yeah we now get into that area where Things probably going to get heavier on the frames. So I might have to switch back my anti aliasing settings. Send checklist. Briefing confirmed. Ecom status uh, checked. 
Seat belts. Yeah, they're still on. Barrow. Well, not yet. We haven't reached 5,000 yet. Decision height is 200. And the engine start selector will remain in the normal position. We have dry weather. Uh, well, actually, we have rain. Yep. So I'm going to activate the landing system. You can see that we are still below the glide slope. It can already um, detect it. India, Mike November Echo, Munich, North East, 17 miles. But we are descending, so we're now under the glide slope, which is important. Okay, I'm now going to activate the approach phase. Please, uh, we should be getting slower, but we don't because I forgot. Not in managed mode. Mm -hmm. That's the speed break. So I'm going to help it a bit. Yeah. Stop complaining. So the landing system is activated. I'm going to arm the approach mode. Glide slope and localizer are armed. We're still descending. So we should be at Magat, uh, hopefully at 5000. We have to stay under the glide slope. So this diamond here needs to stay above the line because otherwise it will not be able to intercept the ILS uh, Airbuses and especially the Aerosoft Airbuses don't intercept if you are above the glide slope. Extend speed brake. Yeah, some weird displays there on the navigation display. Flaps one. So the localizer is captured. See it's in green now. That's the weather radar. Uh, not very helpful this this radar is it that bad I'm going to turn it off okay let's turn it off that's not helpful so we're 11 miles Uh, transition altitude flaps two. Two thousand five hundred. 
Seems they have a bit of difficulty slowing down, eh? Because we are now following the glide slope. I'm again trying to help with the speed brake. Gear down. Okay, now I'm arming the speed brake. I have a key for that. Plus three. Flaps full. Landing cabin crew advised auto throttle a speed and come in more landing no blue. We're slightly above the glide slope. I'm going to let it out of land, see what it does. One thousand. Yeah, performance is quite low. We're just about 20, so I wonder, I wonder what this will do. So that's very marginal, but don't forget I have a very marginal PC. Minimum 200. It is actually performance minimas. Oh, yeah, that's not good. Let's pause here. Let me quickly change the setting back to um, just to give it a little bit of more. There's uh, no point. Okay. 100. At least we are on two digits, 50, more, mainly. 40, 30, 20. Retard. 5. So, there's again the pull to the left. Empty knots. The landing lights aren't very bright, I have to say. So I usually support it with the taxi lights, auto brake off. So the auto land was uh, quite okay. So I'm going to stop here now. Park brake on. Um, yeah, performance, as I say, is marginal at the moment with my PC, but it is possible to fly it. So. Um, although it is borderline, it is actually quite okay. Let's bring in the speed brakes and let's bring in the flaps. And let's start the APU. And 
let's turn off the strobe lights. Then let's turn the transponder into standby. Right, yeah, so that was probably the weirdest to try and fly I had in a long time. Um, I'm afraid I have to say the Airbus it's a great it's a great uh, add-on it's uh, it's an Aerosoft add-on it looks great but yeah as usual it's not finished yet <laughs> there's still some things to do there's still some issues to be sorted out things that uh, the big uh, the big uh, universe of uh, beta testers, meaning the customers have to now find and then Aerosoft needs to fix them one by one. Not entirely unexpected for me. I kind of had an idea that this might happen. I just hoped that there wouldn't be a real bad issue. And once you get, once I get the engines actually running, there aren't really bad issues, okay? but not being able to use the engines is a bad issue. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. <laughs> um, yeah, pity. Uh, kind of uh, frustrated me now um, because I had, this is now the fifth flight. On these five flights, three were attempts and they did not work. Um, one did work, but I was on the runway and I was doing kind of a fast setup and, and it was okay. And I thought, okay, okay, you, you got it now. It, it's, it's fine. And then you've seen me at the beginning and this first part, you've seen me uh, doing things and it just did not. Yeah, it, it just didn't, didn't work out. So yeah, after restarting everything, <laughs> it's the same setup, you know, I haven't changed a bit, but yeah, I don't know, hard to say. Okay, um, yeah, we're getting an Airbus A330. Uh, you should really go on the forum, you should really read through articles um, because there are a number of, of things that they are looking at, for example, fuel consumption. So if you're someone who wants to go really far with this Airbus having a long, long haul uh, airplane now, a heavy airplane, um, you should probably read. So they're going to make fixes. There's going to be a hot fix out probably tomorrow, Thursday, 12th of the 12th. Uh, at least according to what Aerosoft says and they're going to already try and fix some of the what they call control issues or something so there there must be something with the flight uh, model some some amendments some small corrections so it is work in progress uh, be aware of it if if you buy it which is not a mistake I mean this is a this is really a nice aircraft it's just not yet fully there so you may be lucky or you're unlucky like me <laughs> it's one of the two okay that's it i think we spend enough time with this aircraft now so until next time <laughs>